Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairperson, my uh, fellow presenters and distinguished invitees. It gives me immense pleasure to be at the prestigious KDU for the very first time. And I can openly say this must be the best disciplined university in the country. So I'm very happy to have that disciplined mind to finish my presentation in 20 minutes. Okay, so my uh, topic which I have selected is management research, reflections and uh, resolutions. So I'm coming from uh, engineering uh, turn to management. So my domain is management. I'm a learner in management. So let me dwell in this area of management. So these are the four institutes that I work very closely with. These are my public interactions, electronic media, print media, public front. And these are the seven books that I have written. And these are my consultancy assignments in more than 15 countries. This is my US summer teaching as an adjunct professor. I start in a very formal attire like this, but in summer WhatsApp I get a pair of shorts, which is very common in US. And this I'm very happy to share that I went to Chicago attending the Society of Human Resource Management Annual Conference and we got the hosting rights of World HR Congress 2020 which will be hosted by IPM which are the immediate past president in Kalambu, Sri Lanka. And I met a veteran researcher, my favorite author, Dr. Daniel Goldman of emotional intelligence fame in Chicago. So with that backdrop, this is what I feel research is all about. Research is to see what everyone else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. What Albert Sejen uh, Gigoy had mentioned makes a lot of sense. It is to see the same thing but do something different, think differently. So how to do that? So let me um, try to raise three questions and attempt to answer those three questions within the allotted time. Question number one. Why management research needs a renewal? Question number two, what should academics do differently in that context? Question number three, how should rigor and relevance be sustained? I am sure that these three questions will be pertinent to this, um, this uh, erudite audience who are like-minded, which are research savvy. So let me attempt my best to do the needful. I go with this maxim what Albert Einstein said. Hallmark of a genius is the ability to explain the most complex things in the universe in the simplest possible way. I am a simplifier. I believe in simplicity. I think if you can simplify, you can simplify. That's why they say highest form of sophistication is simplicity. Rather sad to say a lot of people complicate things in so-called research, but the real research will make things simpler. That's what I believe. So the reality around us, we need to look at the context in uh, doing research. It's nothing other than change, change, and more change. As Buddha said long time ago, only permanent thing in the whole world is change. Everything is changing, even the rate of change has accelerated. Are we enjoying change? Do we like change? They say this is the only one who likes change. A baby with a wet diaper. Rest of us, we hate change, we resist change, we try to prevent change. That's what the term RTC, resistance to change, is all about. And something, something is getting unloaded from a Pan American aircraft. Some of you already have seen this in FB. So what is being unloaded? I prefer to make it an interactive discussion since it's after lunch. So what is being unloaded? Computer? A part of a computer. What is the part? Semiconductor. CPU? Semiconductor. Semiconductor. Uh, probably semiconductor might be inside. Yes, semiconductor CPU. is there inside. Okay. It's a uh, hard disk with 5 MB storage. So in my pocket I have 128 GB uh, flash drive, which is 25,000 higher capacity. This is the change that we experience. Change enabled by technology. Technology has to be the key leveler, key enabler, key driver of change. So I would call this the transition from rowing to rafting. Researchers should be very much aware of this change. So what is the rowing world that I mentioned? I remember studying at the University of Morotua. Next week we, have, we had the Volgoda Lake, so we had the rowing club. So in rowing, captain gives instructions. Everyone uniformly follows the instruction. Very calm, quiet, lucid water. And 
Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. We are now moving into the rafting world where things are so unpredictable. You can't have consistent way of following instructions. So I associate the rowing world with safe, slow and strict. Whereas the rafting world focused, fast, flexible. The researchers, like any other future-oriented, progress-oriented people, should shift from 3SS to 3F. The faster you do, the better it is. We got to be focused, we got to be fast, we got to be flexible in order to survive and to succeed in a changing world. So my invitation to all researchers, you have to move from rowing world to rafting world. That is where let me locate the emergence of thought leadership. Researchers, I believe, should be thought leaders to the nation. Their thinking dominance should create knowledge and knowledge is power. So in that sense, let's briefly talk about leadership in the context of thought leadership. They say the only ship that survives a storm is a ship. Therefore, let me talk about a ship. So what sort of ship you see here? A wooden ship. So what is the main raw material? Timber. From where do you get timber? From the forest. But if you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to go to the forest to gather woods, sew it and nail the planks together. You might wonder then how on earth can we make the ship? Instead, teach them the desire for the sea. So said Antoine de saint Oxypare, a French writer and a World War II pilot. If you carefully look at this statement, there are two approaches. First approach, I would call it telling style. You tell people, do this, do that, then do that. They will do only that, nothing but that. In the second approach, you don't tell. You create the, the future uh, desired uh, picture. You create that big picture and people do things out of their own conviction. I believe researchers should follow the second approach. Then they will go extra mile in achieving extraordinary results. That's where the thought leadership comes to the scene. It is not what you get rewarded, it's what you get emotionally, spiritually satisfied. For me, I get rewarded for my teaching, but I get satisfaction for my research. When I got the MRL Best Paper Award in 2014, the immense satisfaction I got I didn't get anything financially, but the satisfaction and recognition I got was immense. So I'm hardly happy about it. So in essence, leadership is all about inspiring, influencing and instructing. Thought leaders should be inspirers through their knowledge, influence others thinking through their knowledge, instruct others through their knowledge. It's all about being a thought leader with the knowledge in hand. In order to do that, you need most precious resource in any organization. You might have a leader, you might have all forms of resources, expect, except the most precious resource. The only alive and vibrant resource in any organization, that is human resource. So you need to have the right human resource in order to do research. Right people with right competencies in the right context with the right resources then they will become world-class researchers. I think Sri Lankan universities can earn a lot from Japan. We have two experts with Japanese education origins and they will tell you more about the relevance of human resources, the respect to human resources, research and human resources, how much they are connected. So let me propose triple roles for academics, triple roles for researchers what they need to work on with regard to becoming better researchers. If you look at this as a pyramid, what we all do is we capture knowledge. We become knowledge capturers in various forms, print or soft form. And then we become knowledge communicators. One common complaint I get from some uh, junior lecturers that they get bogged down for lecturing. They do teaching, teaching and teaching and they don't have hardly any time to do research. And then they should become knowledge creators. That is where the uh, pinnacle of the pyramid. So it's all about exploration, explanation and ex exclamation. Explore, explain and exclaim. Moving beyond just being a knowledge capturer to reach the point of knowledge creation. 
That is what research is all about. Sad to say, we get trapped into a vicious cycle. And time has come for us to move from a vicious cycle to a virtuous cycle. So what is this vicious cycle that I mentioned? You become a knowledge capturing person and you collect knowledge, keep on collecting knowledge from various sources and you contemplating on that knowledge and you continuing with the same knowledge. Recycling of the same knowledge over and over and over again. So time has come for us to break away from that vicious cycle. I would propose a virtuous cycle which entails knowledge challenging. Challenging the existing knowledge. Don't accept them as a gospel truth, tripitaka truth or Quran truth. Challenge the knowledge. And then create the new knowledge and champion the new knowledge. Have the wow factor. Wow, we have new knowledge. We collectively create it. In that sense, your uh, app team, collaboration for professional excellence in management, social sciences and humanities is very much timely with regard to knowledge championing. So my expectation is move away from which a cycle, break away from which a cycle in moving to the virtuous cycle. Knowledge contemplating, knowledge championing, knowledge creating, sorry, knowledge challenging, knowledge creating and knowledge championing. In doing that, we need to become visionary, having a purpose in mind. Peter Senge puts it beautifully. You have current reality where we are. And we have a vision where we want to be. And that gap creates a creative tension. The tension to reach where you desire to reach. And that would lead to learning and innovation. This is where researchers should aspire to. You need to have a vision and your action should take you to the vision that you have with required passion. So this is where research should be located. So let me zoom into my domain, which is management research. My favorite author, Henry Minsberg, is now a retiring intellectual in Canada. He says something very profound. Management is above all a practice where art, science and craft meet. Art, science and craft. So I try to depict what he is trying to say through a diagram. This is what I would like to expand what he says. A manager should be a poet in envisioning the future. That is where the art dimension comes into the scene. A manager should be a physician in exploring. That's where the science dimension comes into the scene. A manager should be a plumber executing, fixing. That's where the craft dimension comes into the scene. So art, science and craft come together. Envisioning, um, exploring and executing come together. Poet, physician and plumber come together management as a practice. It's not a profession, it's a practice that cuts across, cuts across many professions. That's how I would like to call management. So what is the relevance of this to us? Why do we need to have rigor and renewal? These are some of the fresh insights into hot topics in management. Originals I met Adam Grant is the most prolific management research in US, still below 40. He became the best researcher below 40 years of age, Adam. So he went take originals, prolific research. So these are some of the new trends in management research, challenging the existing knowledge and championing with new knowledge. And this is um, one of my attempts, managing human resources for the millennial generation. We did collective uh, study, and this chapter is one example. And a historical job, uh, realistic job preview. This was the Emerald Best Paper. 2014. I did it with my colleagues at Oklahoma University, Price College in U USA. And this is the largest ever employee engagement study we did with 12,000 samples across three sectors, apparel, IT, and uh, BPO, KPO, that is knowledge process operation sector. So these are some of the involvements for me to uh, say uh, what I uh, practice, what I preach. It's not just telling, but doing and showing results. So, being uh, the editor of the longest serving management journal, only journal available in the, only Sri Lankan journal available in the EBSCO worldwide uh, database, one of the top three research databases in the world. So, what my uh, intention is to share with you that it is possible and it is doable and we need to do that together in 
having a renewal towards management research. So let the light of doing research and enlightening the world be continued to enlighten others. We need to overcome barriers. There could be a skill barrier, there could be a scope barrier, there would be a size barrier to determine uh, what size of research we need to undertake. And there could be a style barrier, qualitative versus quantitative. There could be a structure barrier, there could be a source barrier. How can I get funding? There could be support barrier, support from the others and so on. So there can be several barriers. But all these barriers can be overcome if you begin with the positive mindset, begin with the end in mind. So this is what essentially I have to share with you. Um, this is what Jonas Sock, uh, an American medical researcher said. The reward for work well done is the opportunity to do more. So let me wish all of you all, and when you do research, the reward you get is the opportunity to do more research. So may you do good research, and may you get opportunity to do more research. It's a continuing journey, journey of going from good to great, becoming better, bigger and brighter researchers. So may I wish all the very best for the remaining deliberations of the research conference. May you produce world-class research with global pulse, uh, global presence and local pulse. So I wish you good luck, all the very best. Bon voyage, happy journey, thank you very much.